Hello everyone and welcome to The Real. I'm Kevin Gomez. Creative expression is manifested in different ways. Whitten Marsalis uses his trumpet, Maya Angelou uses spoken word, Alvin Ailey used movement, and local artist Choo Choo decided drawing would be his best medium to communicate his thoughts. Filmmaker Shannon Monroe joins us to talk about the film he made on the aspiring artist. Shannon, welcome How to the doing? program. Thank you for being here. Uh, now, you named your film Choo Choo. What's up with the name? Uh, to be honest with you, there was no name for that film. Choo Choo mm. is, would be the best title I can actually use to describe what, you know, who he is and okay. what he stands for. So, I don't know, I tried searching for a different <laughs> name, but Choo Choo was just like, yeah, this, this is who you are. It's cool. Choo Choo is very cool. Uh, from what I saw, he's very pretty good artist but let's let let's let the audience judge for themselves sure uh, everybody tell you is one of the hardest things to do as far as freelance work and, and so forth you understand we ain't, ain't no benefits for artists you understand there's no insurance and we ain't got shit and we just out here trying to make something out of nothing that's what artists do and so we, we improvise we use what we got and we create magnificent work with it. Inspiration came from the streets, and graffiti. That's why I started it, I had to know. So I went out and I figured it out. <laughs> I started doing it. Drawing in books, always sketch on train stations, everywhere. And that's what I was doing, you know. And I kept painting and I kept drawing. That's the important part, because everybody says they draw, but at the end of the day, everybody's like, oh, I used to draw. They stopped. You know, I continued to this very day. It's not too much struggle and everything when you do something that you love doing. You know, it's not like work. It's not something I feel dreaded to wake up in the morning and do. It's not nothing I won't try. <laughs> but materials, I can use anything and everything. Everything from stitching other materials onto to as patches. I airbrush, so I, I hand paint. I put um, the heat transfers on the shirts. Also use the puff paint. I got glow in the dark for the clubs. I do it on everything. Clothes, sneakers, hats, kicks, boots, like everything and anything. Even on the graphic design level, which is some of the new stuff that's happening now. One of the brands that I, I sold some patterns to was uh, CCS, a skateboard company. I mean, it's a, it's a catalog-based company. I just opened up some new stores in Cali and Jersey. I mean, this is one of the designs. I, I, I created the pattern, and they, they placed it on the board. And it from, came from Japan and shit from another, another country. So it's awesome to just see one of my designs get made and get brought to the next level. It was very exciting to see. And like, you know, a stepping stone for me that just like, made me feel, understand how far I could really go with it. You know? back to your community. Hip hop to the movement. Man, just keep it real. Hip hop to the movement. And lighting get thinking. With them writing and writing. With a sniper position, position a disciple. I'm a, I'm a person that listens to a lot of music and looks at art, so he's like, you look at these things and you get very inspired from them. You can't help but not. Not everybody does that. Some people just take what the next person does and doesn't even change up a lot of things. They just try to jack ideas, and like, it's a difference. I mean, they're trying to take it and bring it to the next step than just trying to mimic it almost exactly. And so that's a direct, you know, the reflection of recycling, of just improvising, using what you have, you know, to the best of your ability. It's not what you have, it's how you use it. 
that's important. Yeah. Yeah, I'm up at Brooklyn. Now I'm down in Tribeca, right next to the Nero. But I'll be hood forever. I'm the new Sinatra. That was a great film. I liked how he, he never gave up on his dream and, and it, it paid off at the end. So what was it about the streets that, uh, that captivated him, that made him become an artist? What was it about it? Uh, the street teaches him, it teaches us a lesson that growing up is not easy. And he, he captures this, you know, in his art, and he just shows us, like, the different level and concept of, of you know, the trials that you're going to go through in life. You know, you can actually relate to the art. You can feel like, yeah, you know, this captures what I feel inside. Mm. Some people express the art differently. Some people verbally, some people visually, some people just like writing. You know, so he just captures it in a way that we all can relate to it. Cool. As a first time director, what was your biggest challenge in making this film? I would say choosing the right pieces, the right words to say. Mm, okay. You know, it's a lot. You can, you know, every everyone have, you know, things they would like to say and things that's necessary for them to say, you know, and it was just hard for me to choose exactly what would actually relate to people. So in, in that way that you just said, it, what would be the right way to relate to people? How would you think an independent artist and a young filmmaker like yourself uh, are, are similar? Uh, because I try to capture what is really beautiful in the world, mm. opposed to what is more artificial. Because, you know, we're all, some of us, I should say, are just so caught up in artificial beauty and all the extra. No, sometimes you just need the simple things. So, so, uh, so what challenges do you think that you faced in, in making this film? Uh, one of the challenges I would say would be time. Time. Definitely, there's, there's never enough time. Like you, <laughs> as soon as you start, it's like, it's time to go. You know, time just flies and it just, it just goes. <laughs> there's not enough of yes, it, you know? not enough. Uh, What famous artists do you think that a Chuchu looked up to? Uh, one of the artists would be like Tupac Shakoy, mm -hmm. Biggie. Okay. A lot of, uh, I won't say old artists, but a lot of back in the day artists who actually kind of makes sense in what they're saying. They're telling a story like him. Mm -hmm. Like his picture, they're telling a story with lyrics. Mm -hmm. You know, so, yeah. So he mentioned that he used to draw on the trains. Did he ever get caught doing that? Yeah, was actually, he, I. He it's a funny story, actually. We both were on the train one time. He was sitting down, and there was a young lady in front of him. And I just, I was standing up above him, so... I see him took out this notepad. He has this notepad and this pencil. And he started drawing and he's sketching. And I try to look over and then he, he turned the page a little bit. Like, I didn't want you to see. <laughs> and then he was drawing and then he finished. And he tore the paper off. I think he wrote his number there. And he gave it to the young lady. And <laughs> mm -hmm. she was like, oh, this is really beautiful. Thank you. You know, wow. Choo Choo is just spontaneous. He draws whatever beauty he captures at the time. At the time. Yeah. That's very cool. So would you say that as a freelance artist, that he has more freedom to do whatever he wants with his artwork? Or? Yes, definitely. Opposed to someone who limits you to what category or genre you can draw in. You know, freelance, you have more freedom. You draw what's beautiful to you. Right. You don't draw what you know, someone else wants you to draw so that you can make money. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work that way. So uh, what do you think you learned creatively from Choo Choo, if there's anything that you learned from him? Think beyond the boundaries. Beyond the boundaries. Don't just stay, well, what is it, uh, uh, straight-minded. You know, mm. curve out a little bit. Go spontaneous. <laughs> go in a <laughs> circle in the loop. Go, go, go everywhere you want to go and see where it takes you. If it doesn't take you nowhere far, but at least you know you journey through that road and you know what lies ahead, opposed to just keep going straight. Sweet. You know, you're not going to really learn anything. If you just keep yeah. going in one direction. No. Shannon, thank you very much for thank being you. with us today. I uh, hope that we could see more of his work in other places. Thank you for watching, and uh, make sure you join us on the next episode of The Real, where we interview real people with real stories. I'm your host, Kevin Gomez, and thank you for watching.